Welcome to Dan's On Fandoms, I'm Dan. We recently took a look at Star Wars Bounty Hunters Part 2, and today we're diving into Part 3, so let's get right into it. Part 3 opens with Oris Bynor waiting on the graveyard planet of Galmera to ambush Baylor Valance's ship, the Broken Wing. But here's the explosion that Bosk set off at the end of Part 2. Knowing that another bounty hunter is entangled with Valance, Oris changes plans after seeing Valance's droid, 94L. We then transition to Rusan, where we see a hooded individual and an old man discussing the Imperial occupation that script Bespin following the Rebels defeat on Hoth as well as a bombing on Chorgad by a Mourner's Well crew which killed unbroken clan soldiers. The old man mentions that there have been no responses from whoever the hooded individual has contacted and then the hooded individual mentions that Valance should have figured out the clue they've left for them by now. So hmm, I wonder who this is. The story then brings us to Valance and Bosk on Galmera with Bosk telling Valance he'll be getting the coordinates to Nakano Lash one way or another. With his blaster and hand cannon damaged, and 9-4-L still not having returned with the broken wing, Valance takes the fight to Bosk and slugs the Trandoshan in his ugly mug. Bosk strikes back though, and then pulls a knife on Valance, flipping in front of the human bounty hunter and preventing him from getting away. We then flash back several years to right before Valance, Bosk, and Econolash's crew were preparing to fly to Corellia and infiltrate the Unbroken Clan Sanctuary on Coronet City. Valance is waiting to use the comm to make a transmission but Bosk is being a jerk ass and tells Valance that whomever he's calling will never love him with all of his cybernetic enhancements. Valance brushes him off and then makes his transmission to Chorin, attempting to contact Yurala Vega, but Valance has the transmission cut before Yurala can answer. Bosk then continues to egg Valance on and tempers are close to boiling over before we see Nikano Lash step in and break everything up, telling both to get into the briefing room. Once inside, Bosk suggests the crew bring on Boba Fett for the job and then Nikano Lash begins to explain that they were hired to escort Camus and that the job would pay 100,000 credits. We then come back to present day and Bosk and Valance are trading blow for blow, but Valance eventually gets the upper hand after dropping the people's elbow on the Trandoshan. Valance decides not to to kill Bosk, instead cuffing him and leaving him behind to dwell on his beating before making his way back to the Broken Wing and finding 94L has had its head ripped off. The culprit is of course Oris Bynor, who's able to plug into 94L and learn that Nakano Lash is on Rusan. Meanwhile, at a smuggler's refueling station in the Kessel Sector, we see unbroken clan soldiers, led by General Vakora, attack a Mourner's Whale spice shipment operation in retribution for the bombing at Chorgad, killing the Mourner's Whale soldiers and taking their spice. We find out that Nakano Lash has contacted the unbroken clan with terms for her surrender, and General Vakora wants to stall the transmission to trace its signal, while also wanting information on the other one, which, hmm. Returning to Rusan, Nakano Lash can be seen entering a dwelling within a tree, coughing and most likely dying I'm guessing, before walking in to find Oris Binor is already there and has a gun to a young girl's head. The issue ends with Valance getting into the broken wing and Ta'anga waiting for him before telling him to give her a reason not to kill him. This issue was another solid installment in this series, which continues to be superb with each issue. I'm a sucker for rough, brutal, and violent stories, and that's exactly what Bounty Hunters has been. Aside from that, I love some of the easter eggs that were dropped in this issue, such as Bosk mentioning the scorekeeper, the Trandoshan goddess who awards Trandoshans with Jagananth points. In Legends, Jagananth points were awarded for kills that a Trandoshan made, which is why the Trandoshans had a hunting culture, and I'm glad that's being mentioned more and more now in canon. Also, the planet Rusan, where Nakano Lash is hiding out on, played a large role in Legends. Rusan was where Darth Bane set off the thought bomb that destroyed the Sith Brotherhood of Darkness, thus allowing him to begin to implement the Sith Rule of Two. Like the Scorekeeper, Rusan has only been mentioned a handful of times in canon, so I was excited when we learned that's where Nakano Lash has been. There was also the mention of the Imperial presence on Bespin, which we know about of course from The Empire Strikes Back. And lastly, Yurala Vega, the woman that Vance attempted to contact earlier in the issue was introduced in Target Vader, which is another comic series that Valance was in so I appreciated that little tie-in. But what are your thoughts on Star Wars Bounty Hunters Part 3 and what do you think about the series thus far? Are there any easter eggs I missed? Let us know down in the comments. Want more Star Wars content? Check out some of our other videos. Please like and subscribe and stay nerdy.